Father's Day is a day to celebrate our dads and say a big thank you for all they do, for their love, hard work, wisdom and support, for walking with us through the highs and lows, for being there through the tears and big steps and struggles and sorrows and joys and laughter. But for some of us, Father's Day is a hard day, a sad day. Some of us had dads who didn't look after us well. Some of us are remembering dads who are no longer here or children we have lost. Our relationships might be complicated, strained or broken. But whatever our earthly fathers are like, our Heavenly Father is far greater, far more dependable and far more loving. God the Father sent God the Son into the world to bring his children home and adopt us into his family forever. Even the cost of his son's life wasn't too high a price to pay for his loved ones. So we can say thank you to our dads for all the ways big and small, seen and unseen, that they reflect our Heavenly Father, the best father ever. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. He said, You are my sons and daughters. This day I have begotten you. See what love the Father has given us. And to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. See what love the Father has given us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Welcome to this service for the 20th of June, Father's Day, a day that whatever our experience of our own parents, our own fathers, or our own experience of fatherhood, we can be assured and rest confident in the love that the Father God has lavished upon us, calling each one of us in Jesus Christ to become his children. As we go through this service, everything that you will need will be on screen. My name is Richard Jethewi, I'm the Rector, and I'm going to be leading us through this time of worship. And Pam Harvey, one of our retired clergy, We'll be speaking on Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. As we've worked through it over the last few weeks, we've seen some of his sense of God's purpose and mission, some of the weakness and suffering that goes along with being one of God's people in the world. And we'll look at that a little bit more later. But as we begin in song and worship of God, let's briefly pray. Father, we thank you that you have given lavished love upon us. We pray that today we may know more of what it means to be your children. We would be assured of your love and given the strength to love in our turn. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
the fact that our own experience of fatherhood may be mixed is just one of the many, many signs that humans are fallible and we do not always reflect the purposes and the love of God perfectly. And so let us return to the Lord our God, aware of those weaknesses and failures, and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. And we turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sin, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Verses from Psalm 9. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the time of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me, you that lift me up from the gates of death. 
that I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall sink into the pit of their making, and in the snare which they have set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish for ever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardship and diseases, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning all. Uh, as I sit here, I'm looking out on my pretty garden. And yesterday the tall delphiniums were bowed down, but they are upright this morning. So I hope you're all feeling upright as well. Now, I don't know whether you've ever been tempted uh, to when you're reading a novel to read the last chapter or the last page. Um, I don't think I oh I'd, I expect I should confess that I've done it once or twice. Well, actually, I think it would help a lot if we actually looked at the the last bit, the last verses, verse 11 and 13 of our reading today, because Paul is talking about being open. Paul and Timothy, uh, he says, we, we're being open with you. You be open with us, please. And in the first two verses that we read um, at the beginning of that chapter, uh, Paul is saying, please, please open up to God. So there's our theme for today, really, about being open. And uh, um, I've joined in the well-being course that Richard is running on a Tuesday night. And that is really all about being open, um, sort of saying how you feel and what about this and the other has been awful and you've had a great time and all that kind of thing. So it's sort of in my mind. And so Paul is appealing to them. So why the appeal? Well, he's in Corinth. Corinth is hundreds of miles away from Jerusalem where he hundreds of miles from where he has planted a lot of churches in what we now call Turkey. And it was a bustling cosmopolitan uh, kind of city, very busy, a trading port. Um, there would be lots of Jews there, 
there would bound to be a lot of um, uh, anti-Semitism. We, we meet that today. Paul was there with Timothy and the church seemed to be sort of established and strong, quite perhaps good membership. Languages would be all over the place as well. It was that kind of place. And um, we, we know from what he tells us himself and what the Acts of the Apostles tells us that he spent 18 months establishing the church there, which was quite a long time didn't spend as much time in some of the other places. He wrote two letters, they're in our Bible. He talks about a third that we haven't got. And so there's a lot on his mind and he's far away from them by the time he writes this. And he's wondering how they're faring. And he, he seems to feel that all is not well, that his ministry, his and Timothy's ministry and others too who had been with him, Aquila and Priscilla and so on, um, that there'd been opposition, um, and that they'd been questioned, questioned about their sincerity, about their doctrine, probably. So we come into an appeal from Paul, which is a kind of defensive appeal. I don't know whether you've all of us come on. We've been on the defensive kind of attitude sometimes. I know I have lots of times, you know, you even if you don't spurt it out, it may show in your face and you're feeling it. You're feeling it in, in yourself. And so um, what he's saying is, look here, we've done nothing to hinder you. Uh, and, and you seem to think we have. We've done everything to show you our love and our commitment to you. But you, you've discredited us. Uh, he says that in, in uh, verse four. And, and, and we want to commend ourselves. And he, he does an extraordinary thing. He commends himself by listing nine hardships. He calls them endurances in the in the Bible that we've just read. Uh, great endurances. He lists them there. He says, on, on the other hand, I've had positive attitudes. And if you notice uh, that there are uh, there are seven yet. I've done this yet. Seven times he says that. So he's he's defending himself, really. It's a very defensive appeal. And we come to it a little bit later on in verse 11. And he says, now, look, I've spoken freely to you. I've been honest with you. So come on, open up to me. Open your hearts to me. And then he adds a, a very frank statement. You know, he, he says, we, 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 we've not been against you. We, we, we love you. We've got huge affection for you. Look at verse 12. Because he was a very honest and outspoken uh, pastor to these people. And uh, Paul and Timothy, and maybe other church leaders, they'd had a rough time. They felt stung. They, they felt maligned. They're misunderstood. They're hurt. Um, but uh, in the grace of God, Paul says, I'm, I'm not beyond this. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up because of the grace of God, the help God has given me. Um, and uh, it, it, it's really tough. And I want you to be open with me. Um, when I was preparing this, I was thinking about what's going on in the whole of the Church of England, not just our diocese. We call it Shaped by God Together. And um, Richard and others have been working on this and our bishop is heading it up. And I've heard things said about our bishop, about the staff at Church House. I don't think I've heard anything like that said about Richard. But, you know, people are saying, what the dickens do they think they're up to? Um, now, look, <laughs> they're up to it because it's got to be tackled, it's got to be faced. I even heard of one bishop in a diocese far from us um, where, where he'd actually been um, threatened. Now, this is sad. Closer to home, I've got some friends, um, Sally and Ben, and um, they're married, couldn't have children. This is some years ago. They adopted three with some kind of parental um, links between these three, probably the same mother, maybe not the same father, don't know. So that's a good few years on. These three kids, gosh, they gave them a run for their money. And um, they're now in their 20s. And um, one of them is married, husband got a good job, got four kids. The other one is not married yet, um, but she uh, works for a care uh, provider firm and doing ever so well. She's well liked by her clients. Don't know much about the lad. I think he's disappeared. But... You know, I said, I said to Sally and Ben, I said, gosh, this is, you know, I, I do admire you. And do you know what Ben said to me? He said, Pam, what would have happened to these kids if we hadn't have tackled it? And, you know, I thought, what, what a lovely illustration. But they must have felt 
discredited. They must have had endurances, hard endurances. They must have felt like giving up. Um, but they were, there was commitment. There was love there. So, but Paul moves from his defensive appeal to, to a loving appeal. He says, he speaks to them as, my children. Wow. Open up your hearts to us. Now, what a lovely thing that is. That comes in verse 13, towards the end of the verses we had read to us a few moments ago. So against the defensive appeal, he says, open up your hearts. We've opened them up to you. We're telling you honestly how we feel. We're really coming out into the open with you. So come out into the open with us. Come out into the open with us. So there is this, 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 um, Paul, you know, just, just bearing his soul, never mind bearing his heart. And then if we can go back to the beginning, there is a very positive appeal that Paul gives us here. If you remember where we started in verses one and two, Paul reminds them that God is always open to them because he talks of God's grace, this lovely word that comes in verses one and two, his grace for them. And he's saying to them, don't shut out God's grace. Whatever you do, don't shut it out. I, I looked it up in the message translation of the Bible. Some of you may have that and perhaps even use it. Lovely translation uh, there, or it's a rendering of it anyway. Verse two, it says, don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given you. Don't squander one bit of this marvelous life that God has given you. Now, we have faith in God. We believe in him. God gives us his grace. God is a generous God. And so Paul is saying, be open to God and that what he gives you and will give you. He'll give you his grace. Be open to him. He appeals that they're open to Paul and Timothy, but he says, please be open to God. And uh, the time of God's... Um, uh, Favor uh, is, is the day of salvation. God's favor. What a lovely word that is. And uh, he has shown that to us. How does he show that to us? He shows that to us in Jesus Christ and uh, the great declaration of his love. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to quote to you probably the most well-known verse in the Bible. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, oh, you know how it goes. And then there's Romans, a lovely verse from Romans, which Paul wrote, he said, God demonstrates his own love to us while we are yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So Paul is saying, be open to us, please. We're open to you. But, but he's almost saying, most of all, be open to God. Because God is open to you all the time. The, 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 the door is never shut. And so I just want to, uh, to read you. I've written it down so I don't forget the words. A couple of verses of a well-known hymn. You probably know it. Um, the hymn, hymn talk, starts off by, there's a wideness in God's mercy. My generation will know it anyway. And uh, I've just got two verses as I close. It goes like this. The love of God is broader than the measures of man's mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we should take him at his word and our lives would be more illumined by the presence of our Lord. So Heavenly Father, help us to be open to you because you're ever open to us. And help us to be open to one another and receive from one another and seek to bless one another. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
So let's declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, we begin by coming to the Father with thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that through your Son's death, resurrection and ascension, you have made a path open where we may come directly into your presence. Thank you for the answers to prayer we have heard in the past. Grant that we may continue to humbly come before you, trusting in your love and your mercy. We thank you for the continued protection being given through the vaccinations. And we pray that in this country, all those who are now uh, offered uh, these jabs may be willing to step forward. That any resistance from the past, any doubt in the efficacy of the vaccinations may be swept away. That people may be protected that through their protection, others may be protected too. That this country may be able to open up more and more. And meanwhile, give us patience that we may wait for that full release from uh, any COVID restrictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we look at the world news, we find that it is again inoculations that hit the headlines. With Israel offering Palestine lots of, of inoculation files, but Palestine turning them down, saying that they're too close to their uh, use by date. Lord, we ask that that situation and the situation between the EU and AstraZeneca may be resolved. But instead of squabbling over who has what, governments may work together for the good of all people. That the vaccinations may be sent out, given and, and so bring protection. For those countries who have little in the way of wealth, and do not have production facilities themselves. Grant that others may be generous to share what they have, that all may be protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we think of your church around the world, we see in the headlines the controversy between President Biden and the, the Catholic bishops in the USA. Lord, we ask that this may not be seen as a squabble among the churches and therefore a sign that Christianity is not a religion worth following. But instead, Lord, we ask that there may be a gradual working in harmony, that the message of your love may be taken out unsullied by these other things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, as we go through this time of shaped by God together, Lord, as synods and focus groups look at what has already been presented to them, there may be a clear pathway set before us, guided by you, that we may follow it, knowing that 
you will bless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, we ask that during these coming days, we may move forward trusting you, willing to share our faith with others, and above all, growing in love for one another and those around us that your name be uplifted through our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Before our final prayers, a reminder that Alpha is only one week in, so it's not too late to join in this Wednesday evening. Uh, if you'd like to take part, do contact us via the Wellbeing page on our website or by emailing me, and you'll be welcome to join that exploration of what it means to be able to call God Father, to be given the right through believing in Jesus Christ to become his child. If you want to know more about that, here's a little clip. Alpha Online is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning. No filters, just honest discussion. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready and you are good to go. What 
have you got to lose? Try Alpha online. Other things do continue in the life of the church. One is that we are running on-site services every Sunday now in the morning in Newtown Infant at 9 o'clock, in the afternoon at 4.30 at St. Peter's. And you would be very welcome, if you feel ready and able to do so, to come and join those worshipping together in the building at those times. It may be that you don't quite feel ready, and that is absolutely fine. Nobody should feel under any pressure to shift to on-site from online at the moment. Uh, but I just want to let you know that that is there, it is available, and as we hopefully begin to see the end of restrictions, I do hope to be able to welcome you back and to worship together with you in person, just as we have been worshipping together online over the last year or so. Our final prayers. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them as we look to you for love and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender. Amen. The Lord Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. So to God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, free praise and glory today and forever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.